The Kara are a lost tribe. They are the first of the Bastet tribes, and they were tainted with worm blood, and we're going to talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around some of your favorite role-playing games such as Starfinder, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. And you can do so by hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification. Let's first talk a little bit about what a Kara was. They were saber-toothed tigers. They had the ones with the jaws and the, the teeth, the big teeth out the sides, and they died out with the dinosaurs. Despite the teeth, the were saber toothed tigers, the Kara, they actually had a mandate that followed somewhat along the lines of the Macole and the Macole and Bembe specifically. The saber tooths were some of the first cats that Gaia created, and if you were to talk to the Kara, you can't, but if you were, they would say that they were the first and they were the oldest. And just like any of the Bastet tribes, the Kara were inquisitive. Their mandate was to not only discover secrets, but to remember them. Again, this is some crossover with the Macaulay. The Kara had a certain presence about them in all their forms. And this is something that the Khan inherited from the Kara lineage. Majority of the Kara would not have been considered large or bulky. Uh, but they would also not have been considered small by any stretch of the imagination. They were powerful muscles on a durable frame. They were just a compact, tight little unit. One of their defining features, other than a cat's tail, was the fact that they had the saber-toothed teeth, the, the long pointy ones. And they had this in all of their forms except the human form. Different lineages of the Kara had different placements of these teeth. Some were on the top, some were on the bottom, some had multiple rows of top and bottom. Mixed into their essence, which unfortunately was their undoing, was a shard of worm blood. And I'll tell you how that happened coming up. Leading up to the end of the days of the Kara, their tribe began harassing their kinfolk. They grew extremely prideful. They actually started doing some of the same things that the Asura that they were fighting, Asura is the Bastet word for worm, and this had enraged Selene, and Selene is the Bastet name for Luna. It was then that Luna actually cursed the Kara and all future Bastet with the weakness to silver as well as the curse of rage. That's how much she disapproved of what they were doing. She cursed them forever. Luna had also requested that the Kara tribe be divided. She wasn't happy with them all being in the same place. And it was when the tribe was divided that they had spread out across the world. They had found other cats and other humans to breed with. And that's how the other Bastet tribes had been formed. According to the Bastet history, this is ancient stories that have been passed down through the generations. And when I say ancient stories, I mean the ones that even the Bastet have almost forgotten. That's how old this story is. The Kara were first noticed when a human wizard named Peller had formed an alliance with a great saber-toothed tiger going by the name of Akuma. What had happened is the worm had gotten one of its minions through the veil, and it had manifested itself as a giant great dragon. Now, Paller and Akuma had been successful. They were able to defeat the dragon that was terrorizing Earth, Pangea, Gaia at that time. But it came at a significant cost, nearly each of their lives. Now, it is said that on that battlefield, the blood of Palar and the blood of Akuma had mixed together. And the two of them had had such an impact on their kinfolk who were participating in this battle to help support them. They were moved to tears and they were sad to see someone that they cared about near death. So what the legend says is that while their blood mixed and with the tears of their kinfolk, it had touched Selene's heart. So much so, in fact, that she descended from the moon and mourned with the kin. And in Selene's mourning, her tears formed the first Kara. That is how the legends go. The Kara are supposedly a mix of cats, men, and the moon. 
Now, one thing that was not supposed to happen was because this was all happening on the battlefield, unfortunately, the dragon that they had just slain also had blood. And this was mixed in with the Kara as well. Now let's talk a little bit about where you could have found the Kara and what their society would have looked like. The Kara lived in small family groups and they were actually matriarchal. It was the eldest female who led these small family groups. Males were encouraged to go out into the world, find secrets, and bring them back to the women. In turn, the women then judged the secrets that were brought back to them, and they were kind of the gatekeepers of the information. They decided what stayed with the Kara, what was their duty to remember, what would go to the Makole, and what would be remembered or passed on to the other tribes. Also, if something was not good enough or was so bad that nobody should know what this secret was, they also decided if the world would forget this information or not. In Kara society, how important you were, or how high up in the ranks you were, was defined purely by what secrets you knew. And for a Kara, something special happens when they took on a secret for themselves. The secret gained a spiritual significance. It became part of them spiritually. So the more secrets you knew, the higher up you got. And you could also have your secrets stolen. And this happened a lot in the Were Sabertooth Tiger Society. And one of the fun and interesting ways that the Kara dealt with their vast repertoire of secrets, they would give them names that would provide a hint or clue, at least at the content that this secret that they knew was. It was just as much a way to form riddles as it was to form their own catalog that only they knew what it was. Over the lifespan of the tribe of Kara, they were found mostly throughout the world as it existed. Towards the end of the lifespan of the Kara tribe, they could be found in the southwestern corner of North America. The Kara were also not selective with the people that they bred with and with the animal species that they bred with. The humans that lived in these areas would later go on to be known as the Native American tribes of the Apache, the Comanche, and the Hopi. Although please keep in mind, at this point in time, humanity was still very, very new. Unfortunately, when the Kara tribe died out, so did all of the information that they knew, all of the secrets that they knew that they possessed, they all died out with them as well. Kara did not believe in written language. They did not believe in writing secrets down for that matter. This was an extreme taboo for the, for the Kara. The only way that Kara would pass information along was orally. They would tell stories, or you would just have to remember. One of the few rituals that they had that actually required written language was ironically what they used to make the world forget a secret. They would inscribe the secret that they wanted to be forgotten on the teeth of a dead saber-toothed tiger. They would then cut the head off the body and hide the head away so that it couldn't be found and this secret would be thus lost forever. It was unfortunately their pride which was their undoing in the sense that they didn't want to have anything written down and they believed up until the very last Kara that they could save themselves from their fate their worm taint in essence. Although the Kara tribe is gone, their legacy still remains through the Bastet and the Bastet tribes that are still around and still with us today. And part of that legacy is in the full delirium that humans will experience when they encounter a Bastet in its full Krenos form, or Chatro form if you're going by the Bastet lexicon. So what do I think about all of this and how could you use the Kara in a story of your own? I think Sabretooth cats were interesting. They definitely had their place, uh, but they died out basically with the dinosaurs, which is unfortunate, but we have different species of cats and the legacy of the Kara continues to live on. A couple of ways that you could use the legacy of the Kara in your own games today. One way that you could do it would be having an excavation site, maybe a Pentex excavation site, uncover a Sabretooth head with a secret that was supposed to have been forgotten, but unfortunately, 
through some fluke of nature, was preserved. You have the head with the inscription on the teeth in a language that nobody knows but is trying to decipher. Something that would lead to some catastrophic event, maybe. Not the apocalypse, mind you, but something bad could happen. Another way that you could go about bringing back the Kara would be if you were to have a Pentex scientific lab work on the DNA and recreating or cloning a saber-tooth werecat. What kind of effect would that have on the spiritual world if the Kara were to suddenly reappear? Given that their tribe took secrets and they formed a spiritual connection, they made a spiritual presence when this happened. Maybe it just turns into its own sort of mockery breed because it's, you know, Pentax. Would you want to see a version of a mockery breed for a saber-tooth werecat? Would that be something of interest to you? It would be basically homebrewed for myself, but I'd have to find a way to write this all down and get my thoughts out on this. Let me know in the comments below if that's of interest to you. I would also like to give a huge thank you to my ever-growing list of patron supporters. The first layer, Bones Malone, Westheimer, sorry if I got that one wrong, and Ain't No Waifu. Thank you so much for your support. If you would like to be a Patreon supporter, links will be in the description below. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you don't miss an episode. Up on the screen, I will have a playlist of the Bastet tribes that still exist for you. YouTube will have also made a recommendation for you. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.